Good day, students. I'm in this clip. We're going to be going over some of the formulas for calculating our present future value and future value of money, and also um, the interest rate and um, the accrual period. N. All right. So um, let's take a look at the future value formula, which will be our basis for our derivation. So the future value value formula F V is equal to the present value times 1 plus the interest rate raised to the n, which is the number of periods that you have, okay? So where did this formula come from? Well, this uh, common finance formula came from your basic algebra formula for compound interest, which is y equals a times 1 plus r to the t. And another variation that you commonly see in different texts is um, a equals the principal p times 1 plus r to the n, okay? So all these uh, formulas, they mean exactly the same thing, all right? So we know that fv is basically the future value, which is the same thing as n and a here. Uh, pv is the present value. And uh, I is the interest rate, interest rate, and um, N is the, you could call it the accrual period, accrual period or the time, okay? Look at this formula, T makes it explicit, uh, T is the time period uh, with which you invested your money, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be uh, deriving um, the formula for finding the present value, the interest rate, and the accrual period, all right? So let's do some derivation. All we're just doing is we're just going to be applying the properties of algebra um, on this on this um, original formula here so that we can have explicit formulas for computing the present value, interest rate, and the accrual period uh, with just that, with just a specific formula, okay? So let's start with, um, the present value formula. So we're going to type the derivations. Derivation. All right. So the first derivation we're going to do is the present uh, value. Okay. Present value. Now, what's the formula for present value? Uh, for present value, uh, we're going to start with the original formula PV. I mean FV. The future value equals the present value times 1 plus the interest rate raised to the number of periods. So if I want to um, find the present value PV, I, my goal is to isolate PV, right? So I can do that in just one step. What I'll do is I'll basically divide both sides by 1 plus i to the nth power, okay? On the right side and on the left side, I divide by 1 plus i to the nth power, all right? Using a reflective property of equality, I'll end up with present value PV equals, you notice that this two, this quantity divides out with this quantity right here. So you have the present value is basically equal to the future value divided by one plus i to the nth power, okay? So that goes our first formula that we derived from the future value, value formula. All right. Okay. Um, question number, I mean, derivation number two is for the interest rate. The interest rate. Okay. The interest rate I. Let's also indicate what this is. This is the present value PV. All right. So how do we, um, I want to find a formula for an explicit formula for I from the future value formula. So Let's start out with the original formula that we had, which is the future value equals the present value times 1 plus i to the n. So the goal is to isolate i here, and that will be our interest rate. So the first thing I'll do is let's get rid of the present value. I'm going to go step by step. So to, since this is being multiplied by this quantity, to undo that, I have to divide by the present value on both sides. Okay. The present value divides out to 1 here and here. Um, 
So we're going to have the future value over the present value equals one plus the interest raised to the number of periods. Now I want to get rid of this power, which is the nth power. So I'm going to take the reciprocal of that power on both sides, and that will help me take care of that power, okay? So on the right side, I will raise this entire expression to the one over nth power, or I'll take the nth root of this whole expression, and then do the same thing on the right side to preserve equality, one over n, okay? Um, now let's use a reflexive property of equality on the right side. This, if I multiply these two ends, I'm, I'm using the um, power of a power property of exponents, these two divide out. So we're left with, um, let me switch it around, 1 plus i equals, and on the right side, the future value over the present value raised to the 1 nth power, or the nth root of the future value by the present value. So to finally isolate i, I'll just simply subtract 1 from both sides. Subtract 1 from both sides, and that gives me the, um, the interest rate, which is the future value divided by the present value raised to the 1 over n minus 1. So there goes the formula for uh, calculating your interest. interest. Okay? All right. Now let's take a look at the last derivation, which is for the um, accrual period. Okay? The number of periods are accrual periods. So derivation number three, I'm going to call this the accrual period, which is n, or you can also call it the number of periods. All right, how do we want an explicit formula for computing n? So let's start with the original formula that we had before, which is the future value equals the present value times uh, 1 plus i raised to the nth power, okay? Now the goal is to isolate this power right here, this exponent. So first thing we'll do is divide both sides by the present value, okay? Divide by the present value, both sides of the equation. So we're going to have uh, the future value over the present value equals 1 plus i to the nth power, okay? Now I need this. Ex I need to power down, bring down this exponent. So I'm going to use something called the power property um, of logarithms. In order to take use the power property of logarithms, I have to first of all introduce the log, a logarithm, or I can use the common log. Introduce the common log to both sides of the equation, okay? So what I'll do is I'll take the common log of the left side, which is the future value over the present value, equals the common log of this entire expression right here, which is 1 plus i raised to the nth power. Now, using the power property of logarithms, I can simply um, power down, bring down this exponent to become a coefficient of the logarithmic expression, okay? So we're going to have um, log of the future value over the present value equals n times the log of 1 plus i, okay? Now to isolate um, n, finally what I'll do is I'll divide both sides by the log of 1 plus i, divided by the log of 1 plus i, and on the left side it also divide by the log of 1 plus i, all right? These two divide out over here to 1, this divide out to 1, and this divides out to 1. Using the reflexive property of equality, I'm going to have n, which is the number of, of periods or the accrual period, equals the logarithm of the future value over the present value divided by the logarithm of 1 plus i. Okay? Now, this is one variation for calculating the, um, for calculating the, number of periods. You can also apply the quotient property of logarithms to expand this further. You can, another form, this, I can call this form one. Another form you can, you can have for this formula for calculating the number of periods is log of the future value minus the log of the present value divided by log 
the log the common log of one plus i. Okay, these two formulas are exactly the same, so um, it doesn't really matter which one you use. Okay, so the bottom line is uh, with these formulas explicitly solved, all you need is a calculator. You don't need to do any more algebra because the algebra has already been done for you. All right. So all you just need is a calculator to calculate um, what you just plug it into a calculator and then it does it does the work for you. Okay, so let's consider an example uh, just to illustrate um, how this whole procedure works. Okay, so um, how long how long will will it take? A one hundred and fifty dollar investment to grow to let's say two hundred if it is invested in in an account that pays let's say a 10% uh, interest compounded annually. Okay, so uh, so for this problem, you see that all I'm going to do is just set up the equation and then um, and then plug in a calculator. So first of all, I have to identify what I'm looking for, how long we're looking for the length of a period of time. So if you look at a our variables, which one has to do with the length of period of time? Is that cruel period, which is n, right? So all I just simply do is just use the n formula, this formula right here. That's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use form one because I like that one better. I'm going to use the formula n equals um, the log, the logarithm of the future value over the present value divided by the logarithm of one plus i. Okay, you can either use form one or, or form two. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to use form one. Okay, so you see, I just write out the identify the formula, write it down, and then I have to identify the parts. Right, future value is my target amount. Future value is two hundred. My present value is what I started with, which is one fifty. The interest rate i is uh, ten percent, which is ten over hundred written in percentage form is 0.1. So I just plug this into my um, formula and the number of periods that will require me to, my investment to go from 150 to 200 is basically the log of 200 over 150 divided by the log of 1 plus point, point 0.1. Okay? So I just substituted these of quantities into my um, let me just say n is not no into my formula and all I'm just going to do now is simply plug it into the calculator and the calculator will will compute um, this expression for me okay so let's see we're going to do we're going to compute the log the common log of 200 divided by 150 divided by the log the common log of one plus Point one. Close that. Enter, and n is basically three point zero two. Okay, so n is basically three point zero two. So it will take. This will take about uh, three point zero two years um, to achieve. Uh, investment target target okay so you see the power of this formulas these formulas require it's just a direct substitution if you wanted to um, write a macro in Excel for example to calculate any um, period of time for an for a uh, future value situation you can just simply plug in this formula and then input whatever you have into the formula and all of a sudden it calculates it for you all right, so that's the power of knowing explicitly what these formulas are. It basically takes out the algebra from the whole procedure. Okay, so so there you have it.
But thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel just by clicking up here. More videos can be found on modgoldserve.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.